Hello everybody and welcome to the Clark County Public Library program After School Posse. My name is Miss Amanda and today I'll be reading you a book and showing you a craft that you can make at home. Today we'll be reading What is Given from the Heart by Patricia C. McKissack, illustrated by April Harrison, with permission from Penguin Random House. It was a rough few months for Mama and me. We were already poor, but we got poorer last April when Daddy went to sleep on the front porch and never woke up. Mama cried and cried because Daddy didn't have a suit to be buried in. Come June, we lost the farm and moved to a run-down shotgun house in the bottoms. On Friday the 13th, it rained frogs. Everything flooded and Smitty, my dog, disappeared. Misery loves company, Mama said, shaking her head, as she swept water out the back door. I hugged her up close, the way I always did when she was sad or I was scared. Long as we have our heart, our health and strength, we are blessed, James Otis, Mama said, trying to sound brave. But things didn't get any better. We got an early snowfall in November, and Christmas was skimpy, but we made it through to the new year. For I realized February was upon us and Valentine's Day just two weeks away. One Sunday, Reverend Dennis made an announcement during service. Just as we always do, we'll be delivering love boxes to needy folk in our community, he said. Irene Temple and her little girl have lost everything in a fire. We must add them to our list. Next week, bring whatever you think might be useful to them. Remember, what is given from the heart reaches the heart. James Otis, we need to help out, Mama said on the cold walk home. I came back with, how are we going to do that, Mama? We ain't got nothing ourselves. Mama kept right on talking. Sister Bunch told me the daughter's name is Sarah. She's seven, just two years younger than you. You can find a little bit of something for her, don't you think? I wasn't convinced. What do I have the little girl would want? Now, now, said Mama. Remember what Reverend Dennis said? What is given from the heart breaches the heart. That night, I lay warm and toasty under one of Mama's quilts. Still, it made me tremble to think about fi fire taking away what little we did have. What can I give Sarah to make up for all she's lost, I wondered. I considered the blue ribbon I'd won in the school spelling bee. Nah, that award was important to me, but it would mean nothing to her. I looked over at my beautiful sparkling rock, the one I found down by the creek. But how would that help Sarah? You can't eat a rock. Unable to come up with anything good, I pulled the covers over my head and drifted off to sleep. Come morning, I found Mama in the kitchen busy sewing. I know if we had a fire, I would miss my aprons, Mama explained. So I've decided to make Mrs. Temple one. But Mama, you're using your white tablecloth, the only nice thing you have. James Otis, I'm stitching with a loving heart. My hope is that this apron will give as much joy to Mrs. Temple 
as the tablecloth has given me. Mama's smile was a welcome sight. That made me study harder on what I could contribute. Maybe Sarah would like something to play with, like my whistle from Dexter Benson's birthday party. But my spit was all over it. What about my crayons? I drew so many pictures with them, even though the black, pink, and dark blue were missing. No way, I couldn't give her used crayons. And I couldn't give her my pencil that was just a nub and not much eraser left either. As time flew by, Valentine's Day, uh, as time flew by toward Valentine's Day, I fretted more and more. I considered giving Sarah a puzzle. It didn't bother me that two pieces were missing, but it might bother her. Uh-uh, that wouldn't do. Not even with a bow on it, and neither would my capeless Superman Halloween costume. Then I remembered my book, Things That Roll. Mom had paid 10 cents for it at the resale shop. I read it every night until I'd memorized each word, and then I drew pictures of all the stuff that rolled. Sarah might enjoy my book, I thought, but maybe she didn't like trucks and marbles and such. Still, it got me thinking. I gathered my crayons, my pencil, and some paper and got busy. On the Sunday before Valentine's Day, we were off to church. Along the way, Mama told me, as usual, the trustees will deliver the love boxes to the homes of the needy. But Reverend Dennis has invited the temples to receive theirs at Olive Chapel so they can meet the congregation. The church was full. Mama beamed as she carefully placed the apron in the box. When we presented the temples with their love box, filled with all kinds of clothing, food, tools, and toys, Mrs. Temple was overcome with emotion. The congregation shouted, Amen. Even so, Sarah seemed sad and afraid. She clung to her mama's arm and hid her face. I walked over to where they were, they were standing. Hi, Sarah, I said, sounding cheery-like. My name is James Otis, and I'm pleased to meet you. Same to you, she answered, looking at her feet. Here, I said, handing her my gift. I wrote it, drew the pictures, and put it together by myself, just for you. Sarah managed a smile as she stared at the book I'd made. Then, real slow-like, she read the cover, From My Heart to Your Heart by James Otis Petway. It's about a little girl named Sarah, and don't tell me, she said. I want to read it. I want to read about myself by myself. I can't believe it, she squealed, a book about me. Then she covered her mouth to catch a giggle. Seeing little Sarah happy made me happy too. I laughed out loud. I put some hard words in so you can look them up. You sound like my teacher. Sarah pressed the book to her heart, closed her eyes and whispered, thank you, James Otis. I will keep this book forever and ever. Walking home, Mama held my hand. The temples looked very grateful, she said. I think we've reached their hearts, I said. Mama nodded. I'm proud of you, James Otis. How come, I asked. Cause you're you. In winter, night comes early. The sky was darkening and it had started to snow. I stuck my tongue out to catch snowflakes as Mama spun joyfully round and round. Suddenly, Mama stopped. Look, 
There's something on our porch, she said. I rushed ahead, and there it was. A love box had been delivered to us. And our hearts rejoiced. Our hearts rejoiced. The end. Now I'll show you a craft that you can make at home. Now I'm going to show you a craft that you can make at home. I made this little pumpkin out of a sock. You'll need a fluffy sock, like this one, a few pieces of yarn, two rubber bands, a needle, this one isn't sharp, some dry rice or beans, and some stuffing. First, carefully cut the bottom part of the sock. You'll use this part of it. Then cut off this bottom part so that you have a tube. like this. Then flip it inside out and tie a rubber band to the bottom. Like that. Then flip it back and fill the bottom of it with rice. Then fill it the rest of the way with stuffing. Then tie the top of it with another rubber band. Then you'll take a piece of yarn Tie it around the top. Like that. Then thread your needle. Then you'll thread it through the bottom, like this, and create these little indents that you can see on this pumpkin.
Once you're finished, you can tie it. Just tie a knot and then cut it. And then you'll create the stem of the pumpkin by wrapping the yarn around this top part of the sock. Just tie it on and then start wrapping. Just keep wrapping and wrapping until it looks like this and then you can tie it off and you'll have a pumpkin. Thanks for listening. Bye.